junior, and I do serious. <laughs> Dear Superman, it's me again. Remember I wrote you a letter a long time ago, and you never wrote me back? You see, I never miss your television show, and that's why I feel like you should write me back. At least this once. Please? Love, Jerry Cherian. Superheroes are an integral part of American pop culture. Many children dream of growing up to be just like their favorite superhero, with the ability to fly, or super strength, or even x-ray vision. But as those children grow older, reality kicks in, and those superheroes are often replaced with the sports stars, or the pop idols, or the movie stars. But for this one boy, Jerry Chariot, reality became a blur as he wrote letter after unanswered letter to Superman. <coughs> the Kryptonite Kid by Joseph Torchia is a collection of these letters. Dear Superman, every time I pick up one of your books, I see Lois Lane is still trying to figure out your secret identity. And I don't see why you like her so much. I mean, Jimmy Olsen doesn't try to do that. I mean, yeah, sure. She does worship the ground you fly over. And, yeah, she really does want to marry you. But, I mean... If she truly loved you, if she loved you like I do, she would accept you for who you are. Like I do. You know, maybe I should write Lois a letter and tell her to not be so nosy. Yeah, that's what I think I'll do. Love, Jerry Cherry. Dear Lois Lane, I am the Lord thy God, and thou shalt not think that Clark Kent is thy Superman. Amen. God the Father Almighty, heaven, USA. Dear Superman, I don't feel like you'll need to worry about Lois anymore. P.S. You're welcome. Love, Jerry. Dear Superman, the other day I climbed out of I climbed up Old Lady Holbrook Street and I jumped out and I flew. You can even ask Robert. He said I went much farther than I would have if I would have just been jumping. Now granted, that's still not very far. But hey, it's better than nothing, right? I thought I'd tell you because I saw you were looking for a new sidekick on your show with me. Write me back if you're interested. Love, Jerry. Dear Superman, the other day on our way to Duck Rock, I saw this rock on the ground and I said, Robert, there's kryptonite in that rock. He just stared at me baffled, not knowing how I knew that. And I told him I could see it with my x-ray vision. Of course, he still didn't believe me, so we had to break it open. And you know what? Sure enough, a trace amount of green stuff flaked out. And it was kryptonite think. I mean, I'm pretty sure, so we buried it just to be safe. Love, your friend, the Kryptonite. Dear Superman, my mom's got this old green towel with a big hole in it, so I don't think she'll miss it. And I took my dad's magic marker, and I wrote a big S on it, which stands for Super Jerry. And you see, don't be telling mom about this or anything. But today, I climbed up to the third branch in the apple tree. Not the second. No. I could go much farther with that cape. And as I was up there with the wind blowing through my hair, all I could hear and see were Robert's fingers going down. And as his last finger went down, I jumped. And I flew real good, Superman. Only problem is, is I didn't land so good. And that's why my foot still hurts. But you see, we really can't go telling Mom about that because, hey, I'm not supposed to be up in the apple tree that high or with the cape on. But oh well, it doesn't matter. I'll heal up and then I'll take Robert's advice. I'll, he told me how to become invincible before I learn how to fly. That way, even in case if I don't land so great, I won't get hurt, just like you know. Love, Jerry. Dear Superman, today I decided to tell my mom about how I was expecting a letter soon from you. From Metropolis? <laughs> She just stared at me, baffled. Like she didn't understand who you were. And I told her, I told her it was you, Superman. The guy on television, my hero, my idol. But then she just told me that you weren't real. She told me you were like Goldilocks or Little Red Riding Hood. And I had to tell her, Superman. I had to. I told her she was being really dumb. I mean, first, you wear a red cape, not a little red hood. And secondly, I can see you on television, so I know you have to be real. Besides, 
You're not just a real person. You're a super person. And that makes it all the more better. Yeah. Just like that in front of my whole family. Except my dad still wasn't listening. He was reading the newspaper. But you see, I needed to get his attention. I needed him to hear me. So I screamed, yes, sir, there is too a Superman. I know because I know everything about him. Besides, I can see him on television. And that means he has to be real, right? Yeah. That got his attention. And as I stood up, I thought he was going to hit me with, this, with the newspaper. Normally, he only hits me with his hand, but this time he grabbed the newspaper, so that's what I thought he was going to do. But no. Instead, he opened it up to the front page. And you want to know what I saw, Superman? I saw that you were dead. And I couldn't believe it. I didn't want to. But as I continued reading the article, my eyes filled with water. And my nose started to run and it made it impossible, Superman. <laughs> but even through all of that, my dad still wasn't letting up. Who is that, huh? It's your precious hero, isn't it? Your idol. Your Superman. Well, he's dead. It says he shot himself in the head. <coughs> You know, there never was a Superman. Never will be. He was just an actor. In fact, he won't even be on television anymore. He committed suicide. No. No, I can't believe that, Superman. I can't. So please, just this once, just this once, I need you to write me back. Please. Love, Jerry. Dear Superman, <coughs> Today, as I stood on top of my dad's apartment building, I felt so good, and I felt so beautiful. Standing there with my green cape on, just as I was bending down, just getting ready to leap into the air, that's when I heard my mother scream, look up into the sky! And then my brother busted with, it's a bird! And then Victor with, no, it's a plane! And there was my best friend, Robert. Sweet Robert. No, it's Superman! That's when I jumped. And as I was falling through the air, I felt somebody wrap his arms around me. And at first, at first I thought it was you, Superman, that you had swooped down in time to save me. But it wasn't. It was my dad. He had realized far too late that he wasn't going to be able to save me in time. So he jumped off the edge, swooping, wrapping me up in his arms, and saving me from the asphalt. And I still remember Sister Mary and Justice standing above me and praying until the ambulance looked me away. That God forgive me. That God had to. I mean, even now as I lie here in this hospital bed, she's still there like a guardian angel in the night. And you see, I want to tell her that I'm all right, that I'm okay, that I don't feel the pain. But I'm no. And the words just won't come out. As she tiptoes away silently, as she shuts the door quietly behind her, the last words I hear that belong to my mother are, Why? Dear God, why? Dear Superman, today I decided to write to you about my best friend, Robert. He's been the one who's writing these, letter, these letters for me ever since I landed in this hospital. And in fact, he's the only one who really visits me. It's due to that that I've come to realize something. I remember how Robert used to smile and laugh as I'd zip off one way and come back floating the other. As I'd do a loop and shoot up like a streak in, of light. I've come to realize something, Superman. I've realized that I could fly. And I did fly. The only reason why I could fly was because Robert was there looking up to me. That's all there ever was, Superman. And all there ever was.